Okay, we're back here um, with troops in contact and the fight uh, to secure the airfield. Uh, we've had our first contact, um, which I probably should discuss uh, how poorly um, executed that first contact was. But first of all, uh, to back up, um, still a lot of uh, things well, I'm liking a lot of things uh, as they're shaping up here. Um, uh, let's talk about time, though, um, because I'm not sure it's coming across well, uh, the time scale, the time to action scale. Uh, this game is based on a 15 second action uh, period. 15 second action period. Now, Something as fundamental as a time scale is not is not based on you know, one thing, uh, not based on purely one thing. So that's based on a number of different things. But two um, two important uh, measures are behind that decision, that game decision for a 15 second action period, and then I'll talk about what that action period actually, um, how it fits into the simulation design. Um, so the, the two main things, two main considerations for a 15 second action period are one, that is the 15 second time period is a length of time that allows uh, soldiers to engage targets um, and pause to uh, get an idea of the effects of their fire. So that could be several machine gun bursts with pauses in between to determine, you know, hitting the target, effects on the target. Um, so it's time to engage and regain situational awareness. Engage and regain situational awareness. The, um, <clears throat> the second major consideration is that that's the time, 15 second action period is the time that it takes a unit to um, move one 25 meter hex in up posture at a uh, at a normal to slightly faster than normal um, pace. So those things keyed, the action period really needs to be thought of as the time again that it takes to move one hex under normal conditions, um, that is to move one hex normally, and the action period is the time to execute one attack, basically. Um, and and by the one attack, I mean really the smallest, separate, you know, increment of an attack. Um, the smallest increment of enemy engage. The smallest increment. Of engagement, which in game terms is an attack. Okay, um, so if an action period is 15 seconds, I'm afraid that some might, I guess, assume, okay, so this simulation game covers actions um, like a minute and a half to two minutes, a minute and a half to two minutes of action. Um, and then one might wonder how on earth could that, I mean, I don't think it's out of the question that a simulation game at that scale could be made interesting, but that's not this game at all. I think the assumption is that a period is a turn. A period is absolutely not a turn. There is no fixed turn structure at all. The fifth, again, the action period keyed to 15 seconds real time is only a is only an ordering um, increment. Um, it's not a turn. And then I'm afraid that too many might think, well, a game must last, you know, six, seven, eight turns. Why? Because an ASL scenario lasts six, seven, eight turns. Again, this is not ASL. 
this is uh, there is no turn structure and this is not as zoomed in it is zoomed in with respect to ground scale and unit scale yes it's not zoomed in by time and action scale uh, though it might look like that if one focuses on the 15 second action period so so quite different than ASL so if if the typical ASL scenario represents 12 to 15 minutes of action I would say that this game is at least double that. This covers at least, this average would represent 30 minutes of real world action, maybe more. So, but roughly, if it's 30 minutes is the kind of the average here, um, then this is covering twice the action and time as an ASL scenario. And on top of that, this is one echelon lower. So these are fire teams and crews, teams and crews, where squad leader, of course, is, is squads and half squads. So, well, squads to begin with. Um, so this is, you know, going down a level in organization and out at least twice in time scope. So, of course, the question might arise at this point, how do you cover 30 minutes of real world time with 15 second action periods. I mean, are you talking about a, a game that, that, that in gameplay is going to take 15 hours to, to play out 30 minutes of real time? No. The action periods are, um, again, they're not a turn. So you're moving fairly fast through your action periods, although there will be times when there, there will be a lot of action to resolve, but that should be um, the exception, not the rule. So to put it this way, if you start acting with your entire force during one action period, basically if you pick up your force and move out the entire force, you're committing them to a number of action periods. So consequently, if you pick up the whole force and move it, you're, you're gonna go through several periods where you're not able to do much. You'll be able to do reaction fire and maybe some, some other like reactions type, type, types of reaction. Yeah, but you're not doing much, okay? So, um, it's really four action periods represent a minute. Four action periods represent a minute. That, um, four action periods is an action cycle. One action cycle, again, is one minute simulated time. So I'm saying average 30 minute engagement. You're going through 30 cycles. Um, up to uh, up to 30 cycles 30 cycles maybe more in some cases and that is about right and that is I mean if an ASL scenario takes four hours four to five hours um, I should say if an average if an average small to medium size ASL scenario takes four to five hours to complete that is definitely on par I'm thinking with a game here that doesn't have an unusually quick end. Um, yeah, I'm thinking 30 minutes of real time, a real simulated simulated time. Uh, 30 minutes of simulated time is probably several hours of gameplay, but I really need to play test to get a better more to get a better idea there but just to point out that this is not 15 second action period is not uh, again 30 minutes simulated time 30 action cycles you know that is 120 action periods so it's not uh, it's not as fast as it this is covering more action actually more action than an ASL scenario 
and it's down one level, zoomed in one more level in organization. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, I relooked, um, or, or I should say I am in the process again of, of reviewing how I want to handle indirect fire. I want to talk about that. Um, and I'm in the process of reviewing my uh, rotary wing cast here. Um, so first of all, I had the action. I had the, the, the red four um, machine gun here, open up fire on the Marine unit here. The Marines returned fire. Um, tactically, okay, tactically it would make no sense for Red 4 to open up that early. And, and actually the game needs to at least not get in the way of that lesson. If not, if, if it can't, if the, if the, if the simulation game here can't support that lesson, then at least it cannot get in the way of that lesson. Because now, um, now the machine gun's been forced down, by the way. Um, now the, uh, let's see. Yeah, no, that's about it. But in any case, um, had no fire effects on the Marines. Um, yeah, okay, so. <clears throat> the real world lesson is you don't want to open up with direct fire until you've achieved everything you can using other means. Um, so the Marines want to isolate the objective, perhaps. Um, uh, use some obscurance um, uh, and and what have you before employing direct fire and the defenders here to maximize their firepower they want to open up when the Marines are much closer okay so we'll just pick up here even though Red 4 should not have opened up that early um, let's talk about the, the air here since that could come into play very quickly. So now, the um, by the way, before I spoke incorrectly, of course I mentioned an Apache because that's what I'm most um, familiar with. Obviously these are Marines. Clearly this would be an AH-1 Cobra, Super Cobra, Viper, whatever, but let's just say AH-1 Cobra in general. Well, actually in game terms, I can drop that entirely. I forgot that everything is by class here. So actually, it's just a, a helo attack, attack helo. <clears throat> because of the importance of this uh, enabler, this asset, um, I, I very quickly threw together a, uh, a working, uh, some working data for the AH-1 here. Um, very quick, a lot of refinement will be needed across the board, but I wanted to throw together something. To, um, to, again, uh, again, uh, in, in all cases, I'm throwing stuff together to, well, first get something to work with, and two, kind of get the, the general parameters, right? So the first thing with respect to the AH-1 is I was thinking, um, I was thinking, does the AH-1 have the capability to engage the uh, engage that target from a distance that's well off the map? Uh, well, actually, well, first the answer is yes, but uh, my quick data I threw together tells me that the Hilo attack wants to open with its gun, its Gatling gun, its its its. Uh, its main gun, so to speak, um, which it would be something like a 20 millimeter cannon. But, but again, in general terms, the Hilo attack would want to open up with its main gun, I, I would think, against this target. And the data I threw together said that uh, the farthest away 
the attack, uh, the helo attack can be to have maximum firepower with its main gun is 500 meters or 20 hexes. So actually, he's just barely on the map. Um, so yeah, use that. And of course, this puts him well out of range of Red Four. If the Red Four had some type of um, dedicated anti-air capability. Of course they can use ground fire, but uh, small arms, uh, well I guess it would be more than small arms. It would be small arms and support weapon, uh, cruiser weapon uh, fires. Um, but in fact they don't have any dedicated anti-air assets, so, but still the, the, the marine helo attack could stay out of range of the Red 4 unit and still maximize its uh, direct fire with its main gun against the target. So now in this case, uh, you know, again, the, the, the quick working uh, data is uh, the helo attack could drop 20, uh, 20 firepower, uh, 20 area firepower on the building here, but um, that would only, I'm thinking, I mean, this is a stone building next to an airport. This is kind of the administrative building of the airport, the airfield. Um, so I don't think, uh, I, I, might, I might revise this, but I think that the only thing that fire would do is continue to suppress the unit. So, um, so that's that. Um, if they were still in a posture, Actually, you know what? The attack kilo could attack these other units in down posture and actually hope to get, hope to cause some damage, actually. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Huh. Hmm. Ah, it would be would be unobserved fire. By the way, thinking about this type of uh, engagement, huh? By the way, I need to get to beaten zones because reviewing the literature, um, beaten zones are easily two, three, or four hexes, if not more. Um, in this game scale. So beaten zones are going to be a must, an absolute must. Um, so beaten zones are going to have to be brought in here. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'll switch my attention here now to the indirect fire, the mortars. Um, I was reviewing this since the last video. Um, I think that it is going to be, um, <clears throat> the steps are going to be plot, plot, the mortars are right here, so they, I still don't think they have to be contacted, but I do think they have to be requested, which is a change from what I said before. Um, so then on the, on the third period um, or two periods after the plotting period um, the mortars can land um, it has to be multi-period I know that plotting has to be involved um, <clears throat> um, there's no way to get around the fact that when you plot players are going to have to jot down the basic fire mission on a scratch paper because otherwise I don't want the advantage of the opposing player seeing the markers on the board as we progress through multiple action periods. That's not going to work. So it's going to be off map. Uh, note taking is going to be involved. Basic. I mean very basic. You're basically you're plotting 
you're plotting your, your fire mission. Um, and instead of, before I was thinking that you would be rolling at every step, um, rolling for, I think it might be, I think it might work that you're going to plot and the plot will include the action period. Oh. Oh. Hmm. hmm. So I might have to have a turn track, uh, which will really be a time track. Oh, of course, it's not a turn track, it's a time track. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, because, okay, well, this is the first time I'm hitting something hard that it would seem that the time of the plot would have to be noted. So then, um, I think you progress through your 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 number of uh, periods you have to delay. I, I, I guess if you're not rolling for each thing in between, it doesn't matter what you call them. There's just a delay. The delay, though, is the game mechanic for um, plotting, contacting if necessary, requesting, and then observing. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, the point is, I think uh, if the fire missions jotted down off off map, then the time for the plot can be given uh, three or four periods later. Basically, the, when the period comes around for the for the shoot, then you roll for the. Oh, uh, so you would. So you would. Um. So you would jot down the observer unit. So you not only the time of the plot, but the observer unit, the requ and requesting unit. You call it observer unit, I guess, but that's also yeah, you know, the requesting unit, I guess. But anyways, when you get to the shoot period, then you're going to roll, a, you know, a skill, a skill check for and and I was deciding should it. Should it be relevant to the to the the shooting unit? I don't think so. I mean, could go that way, but I think if it's one skill check, I think the skill check should go should be on the observer because well, first of all, the shooting unit. I mean that that's what they do. That is their primary competency: firing the mortars, firing the artillery. That's their primary competency. So. Um, again, it could be added detail to have a skill check there, but I think I can forego that. I think the skill check should be on the observing unit because it's the observing unit that has to understand how to plot, how to uh, call for fire. Um, I think it's all those skills that are involved. Um, so, skill check. Uh, if you don't pass the skill check, um, it's delayed, so presumably it could be delayed not at all, or it could be delayed, you know, two, three, four, five, six periods. Um, which again, to go back to the EIB standard for a just fire, is three minutes. So I think that's will work out generally enough. Um, so then let's go here. So now. Um, let's say that the mortars, um, hmm. here's the other thing I was thinking, um, when, oh yeah, yeah, when the unit, yeah, the unit cannot, oh, wait, 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 it's, um, What I was thinking of was, okay, so let's let's go now. The Marines are going to plot uh, 
for the mortars to drop some smoke in front of the building to obscure so they can get up clo close to the building. So the question was, you choose the, the, the observer. So if it's this unit, this unit is the observer. So I jot down on a scratch paper the target hexes, smoke, target hexes, smoke, the current time of the plot, um, and then and then the observer unit here. Um, the, the point is, is it marked for? Is that an act? Is that a? Does that cost AP? Does that cost action points? And does it or doesn't it? Does it or doesn't it? You know, I don't think it does. Because presumably, first of all, the squad leader who's not separately represented here could simply be with this unit. And the squad leader alone could be doing the entire fire mission, you know, the request for call for fire. Yeah, so I think it's a player action. I guess it's a player action, but not a, um, but not an action. Okay. So, anyways, okay. So, more four player would would take an action. I guess it'd be two actions uh, to plot, and it would not be. I mean, it would not be secret what they're using, what the more four player is using the action for. The uh, when it's Mar four players action, it's simply I'm plotting fire. I'm plotting fire. Jots down the mission secretly, sets it aside, hidden. Um, that's it. Okay. All right. So there wouldn't be any involvement here. Wouldn't be any involvement. So then. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting because then, then when the when the Mar Four player wants the smoke like that to scream, if the rolls don't come up right, um, it could be disjointed. Smoke could be. You know, only one is shot. Yeah, okay. So it's not coordinated. Could be coordinated, could not be. Okay. Smoke goes down. Okay. I guess at this point... Okay, alright, so... I guess I'll, I'll pick up again. Okay, so it's the first um, action period of the fifth... Uh, the first action period of the fifth action cycle. So again, four minutes of simulated time have passed and we've had one exchange of fire. Um, that's all very, that sits well. That sits very, very well. So, um, Mar 4 players, the attacker, the situation attacker. So, okay, so now he would plot. So let's just set that aside. He plots the mission for smoke, and then it's the the um, red four players turn. Red four player would pass back to the. So then Marvel player would would plot the other smoke mission. Red four player passes back to. Oh yeah, see now. Um, Machine gun is is in full cover or i.e. suppressed anyways. So now's the time for the Marines to get up and move. So let's see how much exertion is involved here. I was thinking about this before. I mean, I'm not sure that I like my modeling of exertion. There's basically no. Normal exertion of effort is up to four action points, and then you have 
um, what, what would you call it? Um, normal exertion, like elevated exertion, and then extreme exertion. Um, elevated being greater than four, less than or equal to eight action points, and extreme would be greater than eight, but less than or equal to 12 action points. So let's see what, what could happen. By the way, I took out the zero action point up. Now it always costs one action point to go from down posture to up posture or up posture to down posture. Basically there is no free posture change anymore. That, uh, that's, that was just another further refinement. It's still free to go, uh, go from down posture to down plus full cover and from down plus full cover to, to just down. That's still no no action points, but to go up and to change from up to, to down posture, down posture to up posture is an action point. Um, <laughs> you know, change that again. Change that again. I think moving from down to up is zero. <sighs> yep. All right. Let, well, let's just experiment. Let's say let's say going from down to up is is zero action points, and going from up to down is one. Of course, the one action point from going up to down means the time spent, you know, scanning for terrain, getting down, adjusting for terrain, adjusting for fields of fire, reestablishing, you know, situational awareness, and all that. Fifteen seconds. Okay, roughly an action point for that. But to go from down to up, even if it's even if it's slow and with security, it's still not it's still not enough of a 15 second interval to justify an action point. Okay, all right, let's go to zero for it's always zero to go from down to up and it's always one to go from up to down. Did I say that right? It's always zero to go from down to up and it's always one to go from up to down. Okay. So let's let now let's see how how we can do here. So this would be so this is zero. Um, zero. One, two, three, four, okay, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. 10, 11, and down. Whew. That was. Now let's see what we covered here. He basically ran, and this is truly sprinting, um, 100 meters going downhill, 200 meters going downhill, 275 meters coming down a hill, um, in what's going to amount to a minute. That is um, that's still okay with me. So, so this is extreme exertion. Um, so right away we know he would be marked. So he is marked with a plus four p.m. plus four period marker. Now, um, I'm not sure I was doing this right. So I know this is going to look different than before, may look different than before, because I'm not sure I'm that happy, I was happy with it. Yeah, here we go. Extreme exertion winded is going to go on top. Um, Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Red four passes back 
Oh, wait a minute. Should red four pass? Red four will pass because it, at this point, they're not going to come out of the building, so they're not going to change there. Oh, here he is right here. <laughs> he is within 75 meters of the building now. Um, we'll, we'll see if this all works out. Um, okay, red four passes. Huh. No, no. Let's let's be more let's be more aggressive. This would completely change Red Four's plan, to be sure. But um, yeah, actually, oh no. Red Four might consider coming out of the building, crawling out of the building to get a shot on that unit, but problem is the, the helicopters overhead. They would they would be wiped out, presumably. Let's see how let's see how this actually no, no. Well yeah, yeah, we gotta let's see how this happened. Let's see how this works. So if uh, they are moving in down posture. So this is one. Uh, doubled for moving in down posture is two. And let's see how much they can see here. They can see... Um, they'll stay there. Um, so that was two. Um, And it came out there two. So, so he's marked plus two PM like that. Uh, see, here's where the full cover isn't going to help him. Um, but he still should maintain full cover right now I think but of course players choice you know, he'll hug the ground for now wait a minute yeah because well well actually let's 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 see how far can he see if uh, don't even have it out um, how far can he see uh, if he's just in down posture? Um, how far can he see? Um, it's not really clear. Um, so I'll draw 20. Uh, but, but he's also marked PM, so... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm middle in the in the middle of stuff. Um, eh. all right. Let's say he goes full cover. That guy's committed himself, so he might as well <clears throat> get, get him some. All right. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is down. So that's not the extreme exertion, but that's the elevated exertion. Um, so he is marked uh, plus 4 p.m., but the winded marker goes underneath. Um, not as extreme, basically, as the, as the other one, like that. Okay. And then uh, red 4 passes...
back to blue four. Um, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or seven. Down, same deal. Um, I forgot that. Okay. By the way, at this point, no, never mind. Uh, okay, so red four passes, red four passes. Let's see now if it comes back to blue four. Um, I imagine it would take, I'm just thinking off the top of my head now, I'm imagining that it would take one action period for the helo attack to move anywhere it wants, I imagine. So let's just say it goes right over here. <clears throat> he moves over here. Oh, I guess he would be, just like a vehicle, he would be marked plus one PM2, just like any other, just like any other vehicle. Okay. Huh. All right, let's just say pass, pass, done. Um, move on to the second action period of the fifth action cycle. We go through, we remove all the blue markers for this uh, second period. So now the machine gun. Oh, no, oh, oh, okay. This is, I guess the Marines should have fired on the uh, machine gun again to keep it suppressed. Okay, observation there, huh? All right, well, I guess they still have that opportunity because it comes, uh, so the Marines are the first um, uh, first action anyways. So actually, the, the, uh, Sorry, so the support by fire position there, because they're elevated, they are going to drop the uh, fire on there. And I, oh, well, they still have the choice of. Now, I didn't do this before. Um, oh, no, wait. I think they did a three rate of fire attack before, if I remember correctly. So, what do they do now? First of all, I'm curious could they do a one rate of fire attack and get any effects at. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hexes away. They're an assault plus, so they, um, yeah, actually they, they have one. One, one <laughs> firepower. But that would, Um, but that would keep their heads down. Um, well, let's let's see how that works. They're going to do a one rate of fire attack, so they don't have um, they don't have any uh, no need to roll for ammo. They drop one <laughs> one firepower. On, uh, they're marked plus one. They are marked plus one p.m. I guess that's the terminology I, I'm using. That's the terminology that feels most natural. I just need to explain what that means. They're marked plus one p.m. That just means you go from the current action period you're in. We happen to be in the blue or in the blue or, or second action period. So plus one PM means marked for the third PM period, period marker. 
So there, there. They're already down. They're all they're already down in full cover, so you don't have to add that. Yeah, so they do keep their heads down. Huh. Hmm, okay. Red four. Um, red four. Oh, actually. Oh, yeah. Going to up posture means that they can basically pop up and there's nothing that the opposing player can do. That's okay though. Talking about this guy down here. All right, so red four is gonna do something. Red four is gonna go up, which we're now saying is zero. And it's zero action points, which means it does not draw reaction fire. Um, they are going to fire because we're going to go through the full mechanics for all this. I'm moving him aside so we can see the building. He's popped up. Oh, actually, I guess I should do observation first. So can he see the Marines there? Marines are acting, but they're also in down posture. Right. 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 Okay. Um, okay, so let's do this again. So, to determine if a target can be seen by an observer, determine the observer's observation point allowance based on the target's posture and state. So, if the target is a small troop unit in down plus PM posture and state, the observation point allowance is six. Six. So we go back to then pay the modified OP cost to observe through into terrain to determine if target may be observed. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, actually, that's true because this is flat terrain. So he is observing. 150 meters across the flat airfield, but his observation, he doesn't have, well, however you word it, but he, he maxes his OP allowance here, so he does not reach the target, so doesn't see it. Now, if the unit were up, that would be a completely different story. Okay. Well, he's going to stay up anyways. So that he... Oh, so that takes a player action. But it's not... It doesn't cost AP. And so the unit is not marked PM. Okay. He's going to stay up so he can see what's going on. All right. Okay. Back to blue four. Now blue four. Now the question is... Can the... Can the helo attack see the unit here? Now, because it's clear terrain, I would think not. Uh, I would think not. But let's see. Okay. And, and, and how does elevation help? I don't know about that. Well, I mean, it helps because it makes all intervening terrain flat. That's true. But how far away? So we go through again. This is a small troop unit that is uh, down and FC. Well, I guess FC is what matters because you're always down if you're FC. Okay, so he's FC, small troop unit. See, he's only observable. Observation point allowance of two.
I mean, I guess that's realistic unless... Yeah. Yeah, I think that's realistic. Um... Yeah, okay. I guess I'm still good with it. Um, okay. Um, so then let's say we have, let's go pass, pat. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, pass, pass. And then um, go to the third action period. Remove the lime green. Um, Remove the third period markers <clears throat> like that. Um, here's where it seems that um, again, this comes back to I don't know how many times I've, I've hit this. So again, the way it stands now, it's in the Marines' interest to drop another fire on the target there. The only cost to the Marines in this case is that it's is that it's tying up that unit and it's not doing something else. The Basically, it's continuous and, and in fact, automatic um, suppression, in, in effect. Is that realistic? It would be a completely different case, because I'm using the, the situation-defined attacker. Um, so one, do we... Do we add a, a random die roll at the start of every action period, and you know to determine who's the first player? Because if if Red Four were the first player, he could. You know, it still doesn't matter because look, if Red Four players first, Red Four player resolves this, and then action goes to the goes to the other player anyways. See, that when I was thinking about this the other day, as I was thinking about this is incredibly frustrating to think that with a set first player, set by situation, the first player can just keep suppressing the unit. The answer, though, kind of the real world answer is, you don't wait for luck. You don't wait for a die roll. You have to... Um, you have to bring somebody else to bear. You have to have support. If you don't have support, if you don't have mutually supporting positions, then you're asking for it. Then you're 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 asking for it. So so I'm not sure that I'm really against the continuous so again I keep going around and around in circles on this. Again, I've thought it through again here. Uh, I guess I'm again not against having a fixed um, first player. Let's see what happens here. Let's say the, the Marine player goes first, drops another, another, um, another one firepower, which adds to which, yeah, which accumulates. Point fires do not accumulate. Um, area fires do. So he drops another, which means that, that the target unit, of course, is marked as well. Okay, now, because the uh, Let's see now if the 
Again, this is the whole thing about bringing somebody else to bear. Actually, I guess his line of sight is clipped. Um, oh, I need to correct that. I'm going to say he, I mean, he does have a one third shot. Okay. All right. So. I'm gonna have to clarify what I'm what I'm talking about there. I realize, but it's not it's, it's not just center dot to center dot. Um, actually, I think it is center dot to center dot for point fires, but not area fire. I need to clarify that. So I'm drawing three uh, what are they, lines of fire, line of sight, line line of sight. I guess can't get it all in the camera. Here's the fire. The one that went up before, up posture. Um, he's looking at the, let's see if he can even observe the Marines that just shot up there on the hill. So again, we have a small troop unit that is down, but PM. Okay, he's only visible six away. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's that. So this would be the idea here. I've, I've been thinking about this is that the Red 4 unit here, and the whole force really, but the unit here knows that fire is coming from somewhere here, but they cannot observe. Remember, remember observe is, you know, see, identify, uh, uh, acquire, the whole gamut. So Red 4 knows fire is coming from here. But the fire still cannot be identified. This this isn't big puffs of smoke like you know this were the 19th century, the early 19th century. Um, okay, so uh, so a red four would go to out of full cover. And then, which is zero, and then could they fire on the unit there? So that unit is down in PM. They are visible six away, but because they would be visible to red four here, except that red four is down. Um, two, four, six, yeah. So this is, uh, oh no, wait, uh, no, 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 that's right. So to do it again, this is go through the, the, the numbers here, a small troop unit, um, that is, uh, um, down posture, but PM the observation point allowance to see this unit is six. You come over here to the observer. Um, normally it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Normally they could see out to here if they were in normal state. Normal being up and not marked PM, but they are they are down, which means that we double the observation point cost of the terrain. So instead of one, this is two, four, six. So this unit is you know stationary, not acting, but they're down, and they're only observing. 75 meters through this clear terrain, open terrain. I'm not calling it clear anymore. I changed to open, open terrain. Um, okay. Obviously, if they went up, be no problem. But they're not going to do that. No, they're not going to do that. So, um, oh, I have to clarify to just come out of FC again as a player action. Um, okay. Um, I will uh, pause here and pick up again when I have another uh, block of free time for a session. All right.